Peace, everybody. Welcome to Capital of Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch. Rob Jarrell. And today we're going to recap this past Saturday's uh, HBO World Championship boxing card, which featured Sergey Kovalev defending his belts against Jean Pascal. And also we had uh, Vyacheslav Glasgow, the Tsar, versus Steve Cunningham, and a, a heavyweight eliminator for uh, Vladimir's titles. So in the first fight, we had a the heavyweight eliminator mm -hmm. that was a pretty entertaining fight regardless of what Har Harold Letterman thought. Um, we had Cunningham the boxer versus Glasgow who's more of a puncher of some sorts and for our preview video we discussed Cunningham boxing very well very soundly and getting a decision similar to what should have happened with Malik Scott where he boxed beautifully in that fight against Glasgow and they ended up giving him a draw. Unfortunately that is not what we got. Take it away Rob. Alright so Glasgow has been on the winning side of some questionable uh, scoring in the last with three including this three of his last six fights Yes. Um, now, throughout the fight, you saw Cunningham have a higher work rate and had a higher, well, he and landed more punches while Glasgow landed less, but he had some very telling shots. The only thing is, it did not, it came few and far between, and he really wasn't that active. Now, I was suspecting that he would get a little bit more, at watching a fight, that he would get more active in about the 7th or 8th round, which he did. Yeah, he, started, he did come on later as Cunningham started to tire. But Cunningham, he was just winning. If those rounds were close, he, were, he was winning or he would just win them wide. I thought that Cunningham would at least get the 7 or 5 nod because of that work rate, because he controlled the majority of the fight. Um, but... I guess the, the 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 judges were looking for those harder shots and probably looked at the last three, maybe four rounds, um, and maybe scored the fight in in that manner. Um, I can't really see where uh, Glasskoff would have won eight. May, the draw, maybe the draw, but eight to four. Yeah. When it was one seventy five and two eight to four scores, yeah. right? Yeah, eight eight rounds is a bit much. Like Rob said, I could see seven to five Cunningham, or or maybe a draw, because he came on late. Um, as Cunningham tied, he started landing that right hand a lot more. Mm -hmm. Um, he never really seemed to have him in trouble, but he was moving Cunningham with his shots. But for the most part, Cunningham still had the jab in his face. He was still working great to the body, still landing that right hand. Um, but as the fight went on, there was less, less stiffness on those shots. But he was still landing, and he was still outworking him. And like Rob said, those hard shots were few and far between, like maybe like one or two per minute of the rounds. So somebody out there in boxing land really wants this guy to succeed. Because this is like like Rob said, the third time that people have questioned the scoring of his fights and they've been either really wide or they've just kept him out of the loss column. Right. Somebody wants this guy in the title picture and now he is. Unfortunately, his next title, his next fight is going to be against Vladimir Klitschko where they won't be able to protect him. Well, let's let's say this. And we're going to save Vladimir Klitschko, just for the sake of argument. But the winner of Klitschko versus Brian Jennings. That's, another, that's going to be for another video. Yeah. But it's going to be the winner of the uh, winner of that fight. Yes. And I really can't see him beating either one of those guys, whoever comes out on top. Well, I think he would have a better chance against Jennings because he'll have those... Uh, those people in the in the behind the scenes that are rooting for him, he can do a little bit more. He goes in there with Vladimir, he's getting put to sleep. If he goes in there with, with um, who am I thinking of? Jennings? No, um, just one about um, Wilder. Wilder, he's getting put to sleep. 
Well, he, they probably won't take that fight because he'll get a ton more money with Vladimir. So that's probably, he's probably going to sit on the shelf until he gets that fight. Like we said, if Vladimir gets past Brian Jennings. And if you can tell by the context of our conversation or the way it's going, we do think he's going to get past Brian Jennings. So let's move on to the main event. In the main event, we had a hell of a light heavyweight fight between Sergey the Crus Crusher Kovalev and John Pascal, who um, I think is going by Black Bull, like the Black Rocky Balboa. Yeah, the Black Rocky or something. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. But he kind of looked that way in this fight. Mm -hmm. um, with just a whole lot more speed. Um, we talked about in the preview video Kovalev being able to punch in between Pascal's wider shots. He didn't exactly punch in between them, but he was able to get to his target more accurately because he punched a lot straighter than Pascal. That jab, um, working that jab early, and it's not even just upstairs. I mean, he punched to the chest and the, and the body very well. He punched upstairs very well. And I don't know if Pascal was trying to, you know, extend himself or he just wasn't so sure about those because if you throw a straight jump jab they will land yeah I think that is what he was doing because right now like the conventional thought is you have to extend Kovalev and, and test him late so you have to survive that early onslaught and then perhaps he'll fade if you have enough activity to make him one work a lot and two you land enough to make him think um, so I think that is the, the game plan they had because um, a lot of guys have tried it and the person who had the most success might have been, what was my man named Agnew? And yeah, he still so he's, Agnew. He got dropped with like a, a, a jab to the body. But it was a very well-placed jab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, that's neither here nor there. That strategy has not worked. Sort of like the, the pressure Floyd Mayweather thing or you yeah. know, those, those old, I don't even those uh, myths out there that's like you have to fight this fight a certain way and you'll have success even though no one has really had success doing it. So that was the train of thought. You extend Kovalev into the deep waters where you can perhaps drown him. Now this is the second straight fight. This one went eight rounds. The water got pretty deep because um, in the third round he had Pascal all but out. Yeah. And it was off that technical accuracy that we talked about that people don't talk about with Kovalev. How accurate and precise he is and how technical he is. They don't talk about that because he hits so hard. That's one of the reasons why he hits so hard. He throws his punches. They're technically sound. They're the way they're taught. They're fundamentally the way a punch should be thrown. And coming from a guy that's strong and powerful adds to and plus like they're landing where they they need to be landed mm -hmm. on your body. He he wants he hits you square on the chin. He hits you right at the point of the chin. He hits you right at the temple. He hits you right behind the ear. It's it's a very precise shot. But anyway, he had Pascal out. They even uh, one of them even said he was on Queer Street. Haven't heard that in a while, except between like the two of us. It, it's it's a joke from like wrestling or something yeah. like that. But anyway, Pascal was seriously hurt. And then he started landing those counters. And it was necessary because the plan to extend Kovalev, it just wasn't gonna work, especially with as accurate he was. He needed right. to respond and respond emphatically, yes. which he did. Yes, um, after that fourth round where he had to get himself together, he came out in the fifth round and landed some tremendous right hands that you could see Kovalev was clearly hurt. So on that note, we have to give both of these guys a tremendous amount of credit mm -hmm. because they ate some shots. I mean, these were some shots that heck, Pascal landed those rights on anyone else, the fight would have been over. Had Kovalev landed those rights that he landed on Pascal on anybody else, that fight would have not been out of that third round. So these guys have proven that they have heart, they have determination, they have iron will, and you're just not going to walk through either one of these guys. Let's talk about the technical aspects for a second. Yes. There were two things that I thought Pascal could have done better, 
even though he did have success with the game plan he was implementing. One of those was countering Kovalev's right hand with his own right, which he was trying to roll with and come back. One thing um, we talked about before, how he wings his punches. He, he's got to learn to straighten that, those punches up. Now, it's cool when he's throwing over that long, that long punch of uh, Kovalev's because it's not particularly fast, but it gets to the point in the shortest amount of time for him. Thing is, if you can avoid it mm -hmm. and throw that overhand or looping right to the side of the head, which he did, right, then you have a chance to continue the, the attack because it severely buzzed Kovalev. Which brings me to point number two, distance. In order for this to work completely, you have to have a different distance in order to get that punch off. Pascal was always in range of Kovalev's right hand. And then to top it off, he leaned to his right, which gave Kovalev a perfect angle to shoot it right through across the shoulder and land on him consistently. Especially if you're on that left side, it could it could literally land anywhere. Temple behind the ear, on the jaw, all of it is open for its its target practice. If you know what you're doing, and Kovalev knows exactly what he's doing. Right now, with Pascal leaning this way, one he didn't use his shoulder to protect that area. Um, he did one time where he caught caught him with the elbow and came back with the counter. That was the one in the fifth round. Mm -hmm. But had he stepped back some or at least to an angle to where if he does lean that punch can't get there quite as far or Kovalev will have to overextend himself to get there and then come back with the right hand mm -hmm. a straight right hand as you just saw what I um, demonstrated on Rob right there he would have had a lot more success and we might be talking about Pascal and Adonis Stevenson instead of Kovalev and Adonis Stevenson that close, like two little technical shores up, and and we got us a different fight. Now, uh, something else that I saw is one, if he could, he could have made made this fight a lot better on the inside. Again, with throwing that straighter right, that straighter right hand. Um, one, because he's looping those shots so wide, he's taking, he's putting so much into those shots that he's taking a lot out of himself. Oh, yeah. And you can tell in the eighth round, whatever success he had from the fifth to the seventh dropped dramatically because yeah, he did he, not look like he was all there. Right. He was not fresh. So, if, again, a straighter shot is less energy expended yeah. and it does not take you off balance. Two, he backed up straight because there was one where Kovalev just threw a hell of a left, uh, a straight left that landed on the mark. If he could step to the left or the right, then he had again he has a chance for a countering with the right hand. Right, creating angles like we like I just said. So I would have tried to tighten up his the lateral movement so you can continue to land those counter shots. Because they're so long, because they're slightly lazy, because um he takes a while to pull them back. Sorry about that. Because he takes a while, because he has a very long punch. Right. Because it takes him a while to get that his his fist back into fighting position, you could take advantage. And like I said, like like Hakeem said, straighten up the punch, move laterally without moving too far away or even moving back. Yeah. Now he has the athleticism to do it. And he has the assistant coach to teach it to him in Roy Jones. So hopefully they can get that tightened up. Maybe he wins another fight, they do it again, and he has a little bit more success. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Kovalev is going to knock him out again. Um, I think they might end up doing a rematch because it was so competitive um, in those spots, and also a lot of people aren't happy with the stoppage. I personally thought it was a good stoppage because in that exchange beforehand, Pascal was really out. Like He, he took some Shots, he stumbled, Kovalev went after him, he swung, Kovalev goes down, they call it a slip. And while they're breaking him up, um, the camera didn't catch it. Like you could kind of, you could see Pascal stumble off the screen. Mm -hmm. He was still hurt from that onslaught earlier before Kovalev fell. 
And then Kovalev lands two very hard flush right hands and the ref stops it. So the ref was looking at all of that, not just the two right hands because he's like, oh, you know, he only landed two punches. I could have kept going. You were still hurt from the previous volley. Mm -hmm. So the ref was looking at all of that, the totality of the situation and not just that part of it right there. That's why I didn't think that it was an early stoppage. And because they were in Pascal's hometown, because he was doing so well, a lot of people are upset about the way that it ended. I can see a rematch happening. I see Pascal maybe having to take another fight. Um, yeah. Whether it's against... He's fighting um, at a catch weight of 172 against Andres from Farah after the fight with... Joe Stevenson. No, it's Chavez. No, I said Chavez. I said after that fight. I okay. could see him taking maybe a tune up or something to kind of work on those things because Andres Fofara, who no, he fought Stevenson, does kind of have a similar style, just not at, nowhere near as effective, where he throws those long punches. Oh, he taught his Kovalev. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something that he could definitely practice against. But um, maybe that fight and something after that because one, it's going to be big money in Canada. It was at what the Bell Center. Yep. And it's any fight, usual. anything at the Bell Center is going to make money. Yeah, because they support their fighters up there in Montreal. Shout out to you guys. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, actually, no. We got to make one more point because we got to talk about the winner. What does Kovalev do from here? It's only one thing he can do, and that's Adonis Stevenson. We've been waiting on this fight for almost two years now. Don't go Mayweather Pacquiao on us. And it's not Kovalev, it's, it's the people of Stevenson. Mm -hmm. They tried to like do one of these back doorways to get him the belt. That didn't work. So now, really, they are running out of people for him to fight. So he's going to have to fight Kovalev really soon. And he can't keep taking lower tier fights because you got... You do have guys like, um, what's his name, Mirtaev, uh -huh. who's, go who's going to fight Gabriel Campillo. You have Campillo. They'll probably put him against, uh, was it Isaac Chimbala? or is he Chalimba. Yeah. Man, yeah, he won on the undercard. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's not too many people that can give Adonis Stevenson anymore. He's going to have to fight Kovalev. And if you've been watching this show for a while, you know how we think that's going to end, even though we are going to still technically break that fight down if it happens before it happens. But you already know how we think that's going to end with Stevenson on the ground. But it's got to happen because they're the best two guys in the division. So now we're done with this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you like it. Give us a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Comment below if you have anything you want to say. You can hit us up on Facebook, Capital of Combat, Google Plus, same name. You can email us, Capital of Combat at gmail.com. Any of those ways, hit us up. We'll be glad to hear from you, and we will respond. So subscribe if you haven't, because we got plenty more content coming for you. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's the game. I kick rhyme, hurricane. I told them. I don't play, I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter, Street Fighter, Street Fighter.